Welcome to Marin Poets Live. I'm Neshama Franklin. I work at the Fairfax Library and I love poetry. After this program airs on TV, it will appear on the Marin Free Library website as part of a digital archive which also features biographies of the poets and links to our collection. Today we are featuring poet Laurel Feigenbaum. Welcome, Laurel. Thank you. Here we are. I'm glad to be here. Good. And do you have a Marin poem for us to start with? I do. I do. Uh, it's called Soul Food. And uh, I like to, I have friends that I walk with on uh, Thursdays, and they're good birders. I'm a birder. Mm -hmm. and, but they know all about wildflowers and everything else. And so it's uh, a kind of my Thursday therapy. Ah. And this is Soul Food. Some mornings, the world doesn't seem such a dangerous place. Walking a bike path, white light from a cloud-shrouded sun glazing the water, silver-striped tide coming in from the bay. Watching an egret, stark still, stand and wait. A horned grebe pop up, battling a marine worm hanging from its bill, whipping it around until the last bit is sucked down. Disputes between birders, herring or western gull. Time to notice the perfect ordered world of wildflowers. Early spring pussy ears, white and pink, clustered petals, lash fringed, creamy milkmaids, fennel rubbed between thumb and forefinger, scent of anise, scent of sage. Ah, oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> and how lucky you are to have that Thursday morning therapy Absolutely. and to give it to us as well. <laughs> What's next? This is called Laughter Tears. We are complex creatures, the sum of parts, sometimes tender, sometimes tart, pieced together with metal and a beating heart. One day riding the waves, another caught in an undertow. I had a yellow Fiat once, it was just like me. All stop, all go. Que scholars question why. Freud might blame it on mother a weak libido or superego. Some hold to fluoride, winds, stars, mercury in retrograde, Mars. I, for one, consider the push-pull of opposing forces, whether by accident, plan, chemistry, or decree, to be our commonplace state, born as best we can. Ah, uh, that's absolutely delightful. And I love the playing with rhymes. You're not stuck in them, but you can bounce off them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like things, um, well, we're full of opposites ourselves, and mm -hmm. opposites are, uh, uh, I play with opposites. Yes. And um, from that, one morning, I woke up, and I must have been dreaming, but thick and thin came to mind. Mm -hmm. It's one of those happy things that happen. Yeah. And from that came sociology. To say we were passing acquaintances would be too thin, or that we were friends, too thick. She married a thick stack of old money. I married and worked. She volunteered, her picture often featured in Sunday's style section. Somewhere along the way, we were on a board together. After a meeting, I admitted fi to finding the proceedings boring. By the time the elevator reached ground zero, I knew she considered me entirely too thin. Not long ago over a buffet table and after the usual greetings, she asked what I'd been doing. I confessed to poetry, reading, and even some writing. Curious, she looked up. Being attracted to words and wordplay since the time I first heard petroleum as I sat in a large chair, my small ear tuned to the radio and my latest loves, tintinabulation and glossolalia, my stock visibly rising with the transformative power of poetry and each mellifluous sound and syllable. Oh, my goodness, what a surprise. What a platform to jump off of the society lady. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, so, yeah. thank you. And I also like to write about um, the, our modern world and technology and my very insecure place in it. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, you're speaking for me. 
right. <laughs> and this is called factoids. Before the age of man and machines, conspicuous consumption, built-in obsolescence, and high tech, people and things evolved in slow motion. B.C. to A.D., one cell at a time, tree swingers to Homo erectus, hunter-gatherers to town folk, a flat world to Copernicus, and so on and so on, through millenniums until flush toilets. Then fast forward to bright lights, the Model A, and Icebox, and Philco. No books for dummies needed. Darwin's finch took generations to adapt a beak. But when a cell replaced Marconi and Bell, in the blink of an android's wireless eyes, opposable thumbs became muscle, mu muscled mutants, ambidextrous digits, texting, typing, IMs, no longer clumsy all thumbs, now a poised finger pointing the way. In this brave new online world of endless gadgets, outsmarted by smartphones, platforms, servers, iPads, iPods. Let others flicker and Twitter a handheld world. In my space, I chat the old-fashioned way, watch wireless clouds drift by, listen for the Twitter of birds in the timeless flicker of morning light. Let's hear it. <laughs> I love that. It's a manifesto. It is a manifesto, and but also I, I'm already um, outpaced because I think Twitter was sold to somebody else and Flickr yes. is gone to right. some cloud right. or whatever. But you're playing, no, 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 but you're playing it just beautifully in there. Okay. And everyone will recognize it. Right. <laughs> and in that same vein, this is called Modern Times. I suspect I'm not alone if I confess a part of me resides in a virtual reality, an alternate universe of mental litter. But I wonder about virtual reality in a world outside my kitchen or car. Yesterday's science fiction, today's software science. From driverless cars to faux pets, adopted, pampered, loved without fear of being run over. Stand-in robotic teachers and personal assistants. Virtual fry cooks turning out burgers in 30 seconds. A new age assembly line, Charlie Chaplin. The virtual world humming along while we twiddle oversized thumbs. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. And I do worry about that. Uh-huh. Yes. Um, when, this, when you have a foot f firmly planted in the past, and the older we get, the, you know, the farther away that foot is from where the next one is, it's such a stretch. But you're stretching with your poetry. <laughs> Trying Out of to, necessity, trying you to are. Under, exactly, and yes. trying to understand it. Right, right. Well, this one is called Robotics, a oh. short little poem. I no longer have an icebox, rotary dial or party line, phonograph or typewriter. I don't fly with, fry with Crisco or eat canned peas. My luggage has wheels, my mattress memory. An out-of-space voice tells me to turn, and someone named Siri, who I've never met, tells me everything else. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. Wonderful okay. and charming. Um, it's kind of like you're making lemonade. I'm making lemonade. Yes, it's you it's are. a very good source. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this is called Midday Foreplay. A little off the, as poets, we sit and observe often mm -hmm. and with pen and pencil to jog our memories. And this is called Midday Foreplay. As in a cheap romance, they stand close, lean into each other, hands entwined, his body broad and muscular. She's slight and blonde in tight jeans, a pink cashmere breast nestled against his arm, faces separated by inches, eyes locked, caressing each hushed word as they discuss the merits of mugs and coffee makers for sale on shelves lining the wall. Unnoticed are others standing nearby, the loud sound of the grinder, the hiss of steaming milk, or Frank Sinatra in the background, until the spell is broken when the call comes. Two double lattes, extra foam for Steve, and we are all released. Ah, 
Do you travel? You travel with uh, index card and pen and jot? a little a little notebook. And, uh huh. So <laughs> right. And when I don't have it, you know, or fish for it, uh -huh. or changed a purse or something, then then I do use anything. Right. So right. A friend once said to me on one of my seeing one of my scraps of paper, oh, another one of Laurel's important documents. Uh huh. So, and indeed they are. Yeah. It's your sources of inspiration. For anything. Yes. Uh, this is called Department of Complaint because I, uh, well, the book is titled The Daily Absurd. Mm, very good. I could have guessed. <laughs> so there you are. Yes. And um, so I um, uh, keep track of mm -hmm. the various absurdities that I'll find, usually in newspapers, oh, magazines, yeah. or here mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah. But this is called the Department of Complaint. For a savvy armchair activist, big issues are no problem. War, whales, treason, tyranny, just a click away. High dudgeon register, petition signed. But where do we protest the mundane? The tasteless strawberry, modified by an Arctic flounder's cold resistant gene, mass produced, rushed to market, photosynthesis cut short. I remember a day in a strawberry patch, bursts of sweetness, dribbles of juice on my chin as I picked, sampled, filling baskets in Southern California's summer heat. And the stress of multiplying choices. Yes, Heinz had 57 varieties. Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, but coffee was coffee, vinegar was red, white, and cider, olive oil was just that. And if there were any extra virgins, we didn't advertise. Wow, there you have it. Did you grow up in Southern California? I was born in San Francisco oh. and we left when I was nine. Wow. So I spent high school, grammar school and high school in Southern California, then came back uh -huh. to Cal and never left. Ah, <laughs> and that's the place you feel fully at home. Absolutely. It's yes. I'm the original. I left my heart in San Francisco. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Does San Francisco creep into any of your poems? Uh, uh, yes, mm -hmm. if I'm, I happen to be birding over there. Uh -huh. And also I have friends, relatives. Yes. And there is a, a poem or two that mm -hmm. you might not know mm -hmm. if it's San Francisco. Well, let's keep going with what you have for us. Okay. Because I'm having so much fun. Um, well, this is called Gertrude, the Stein Collection. Mm -hmm. If he asked me if I liked it, if I told him, would he like it? Would he like it if I told him the wheelchair was in the way? From, fine for my long-standing husband, but I was pushing the chair, suffering complaints about my driving, warnings of near-missed ankles or shins, and navigating for a front row seat before Picasso or Matisse proved major distractions until we came to Gertrude, settled Buddha-like on a pedestal, relaxed in the folds and creases of her fully rounded bronze, bronze girth, one shirt button left undone, hands resting on a skirt pulled taut across parted knees, hair pulled back in a bun, light reflecting from cheekbones and chin, leaning forward as if she had something to confide inviting the viewer to linger, come closer, caught in her gaze and sheer presence. There was there, there. Oh, there certainly is. You, as you painted her, I saw it absolutely. <laughs> you brought her uh, corporeally <laughs> as, who was the painter? You remember? Uh, the no, actually, I don't. Yeah. Well, it was a bronze. Oh, it was a bronze. It was a bronze. Oh, it wasn't no, because I've seen, I've seen. Uh, I think that's the way she presented she, herself. Right. Always four square. Right. Exactly. Yes. With this taut skirt across right. her legs. Yes. But I don't. If I did know it, it's I don't okay. have it. Not any, important. Yeah. More. It's poet. a good question, though. Yes. Okay. But the poem came first. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. And um, here. Here uh, are a few that I've written since, and ah. the last well, few months, really. Great. Fresh minted. Fresh. <laughs> freshly minted, exactly. Yes. This is called Words and Music. If this were a practice life, in the next I'd croon and scat like Ella, get down and dirty with Etta, 
glide across the floor with Fred or Jean, improvise with Basie, score like Sondheim or Hammerstein. In my spare time, I'd cultivate a garden, be fluent in Spanish, make souffles like Julia, lounge, putter, fritter, bask, have a big brother like peanut butter, add a lover. Mmm, that's delightful. But you know, you can, through the poem and through your life, you can play with all those things. It's not over. It's not over. <laughs> no, I, I, and I really, years ago, you know, we all, there are all the ups and downs and ins and outs oh, yeah. and of uh, life. Yes. And I remember being on the tennis court thinking, I wish I had a practice life. Uh-huh. So I'd get it right. Yes, know. we never get it right. We never get it right. Right. But I believe for the last, like, uh, four lines, you are flittering and basking, and you're doing that stuff anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Right. It's as good as it gets. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> and uh, as, this has, these have a, a different tone. Uh, my husband spent about six weeks at the Redwoods, oh. uh, in their skilled nursing center mm -hmm. during the summer. And so from that came other things. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll read Matrimony first. This is called Matrimony. Reading that an elderly couple had died with hours of each other, I thought how sweet, joked, speculated, pills, fatigue, power of angry words, natural causes not considered, Seventy years seemed unnatural, the dailiness of it, an abstraction I couldn't get my head around. And here we are, habits, routines, wants, needs, met and unmet, six and a half decades, a day at a time, folding laundry, replenishing bananas, hearing aid batteries, Sunday brunches, the week's news, celebrations, memorials, TV remote tug of wars, accommodation, forgiveness. Looking into the same blue eyes as he savors food, sucks chicken bones dry, and so deliberately, head down, maneuvers the walker around furniture to reach the bedside where I'm propped up reading, leans over in his sagging underwear for a good night kiss, sleep well. That is so beautiful because it's so quotidian. It's the stuff, you know, it's not, it's the stuff that we live with. And, and it's very moving to me. I like that a lot. Thank you. This is the bed. Mm -hmm. We shared a wall bed in our first apartment, then graduated to a house and a queen, framed to loose Lautrec, the, ki the kiss positioned above. A bedded couple face to face wrapped in each other's arms, a palette of yellow and red fading to pale blue, gray, green. We visited them in the Dorsey years later. Quilts, linens, mattresses, firm, foam, orthopedic changed over the years, but the kiss remained. An electric blanket with dual controls switched, he turning the temperature down, me turning it up through one long night. Restless legs, trips to the bathroom, tossing, turning for a comfortable position, waking, disturbing each other. Then separate bedrooms. Some mornings he visits me in the queen. On a recent short vacation, we share a king. After one sleepless night, I move floor, floor, four floors down, bed size of a Murphy and seven hours sleep. Waking, I thought I'll take the elevator to 812 lie down beside him, talk of how we slept, what it was like to have separate hotel rooms, pretend we're under assumed names in a clandestine affair, young again. Wow, that's using hard stuff to make something sweet. It's amazing <laughs> to me, that, that longevity. I'll just tell you about seven minutes. I bet you can. Okay. I just, I just don't want, I want you to do the ones you want to do. Good. No, I'm good. Yes. Well, this is called Solitude. I may. And this, again, is in that same vein. At the prospect of be al being alone, I imagine myself the type to eat over the sink, 
grab cold leftovers, or open a can. Take care of yourself, they say, one day at a time. It's 7 p.m. I'm sitting at the kitchen table, a bowl of hot soup, a plate of spaghetti and meatballs my daughter has brought. The newspaper spread out, an infusion of sweet tenor sacks from Dinner Jazz on FM. Mount Tam holding fast, still divisible in dusky light. Later, or in the early hours, I'll wake, make lists, a ramp to replace stairs, home care, research motorized cushions and lift chairs, fall back to restless sleep, dream of him in pajamas, propelled into air on a slant ramp in a runaway wheelchair. Mm. Yeah. Your experience absolutely crystallized. Mm. It's very, it, it's, it's tough stuff. It's tough stuff. Yes. Well, this is called shelf life. Okay. <laughs> Doing a little something else with tough stuff. Yes. Though I've made it through actuarials, my frozen raspberry tart may outlast me. <laughs> Stewed tomatoes and succotash, secure in vacuum pack cans, most certainly will. Their shelf life assured by additives, sulfites, trans fat, all known to shorten mine. <laughs> Hundred-year-old peaches found in the hull of a sunken ship, as safe to eat as when they were canned. Egyptian burials prepared for afterlife with food, beer, and wine, a laden table or box lunch, whole ducks, joints, a mummified goat. I don't plan to take much. That form-fitted red dress with sweetheart neckline I've saved for just such an occasion. Pipe music, a swinging Benny Goodman and the angels sing, a jug of mead, jar of honey, magic barred from King Tut's tomb to assist in the journey, one life to another. Okay, you laid it out. I laid it that's, out. That's magnificent. So, we have time to share some more. All right, well, I'll... Okay. I have one, one more here. I don't want to lose track. Here it is. I don't okay. want to lose track of it because okay. I... Okay. Well, I'll read it now. All right. Uh, this is called Family Gathering. Mm -hmm. They came to celebrate Papa's 94th, bearing gifts, cards, and sonogram display, <laughs> baby on the way, lying on its back, looking like a gummy bear, pinpoint legs and arms in air. What could be better, we say, thinking back to when we were just two, who grew three, and three married three, Six grew seven to become 13, and together we were 15. Then 16 joined, and now 17, an embryo in utero. We don't have to look far for signs of age, wrinkles, canes, aches, pains. But you know you're old when your firstborn is Social Security eligible and your baby is going to be a grandmother. Oh my goodness, <laughs> yes. I like so that. So that's, that's joy. Right, it is joy. That and is it, joy. it always has a nursery rhyme quality <laughs> or a lullaby quality mm -hmm. in it. Of, you know, Good. that's domesticity, that's family. That is family. Yes. So three minutes worth of poetry. Three minutes worth of poetry. Uh, but first, let me ask you this is a, the, always the burning question when did you know you were a poet? <laughs> I'm not sure I know that. I know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll attest. <laughs> but when, right. when did you start well, writing then? Uh, my father really always loved poetry and would read it and pick out things that might be appropriate, little mm -hmm. lessons here and there, yeah. whatever. And then at Berkeley, uh, it was Wordsworth and the Romantics, uh, yes. and I was an English literature major, what else? Yeah. And I read a lot of poetry uh -huh. and, and did limericks and... Um, you know, and for plays or things we'd put on, mm -hmm. I would write those. Yes. But I never really thought I was a poet. <clears throat> it seemed pretentious. Yes. But then I took a class from Jackie Cudler. Ah, oh, lovely. The College mother of, of us Marin, all. The mother of us all. Yeah. And then I took a, a workshop, I, and I felt like this is where I belong. Yes, definitely. That's, that's what did it. Definitely. So we have t a two-minute poem. A two-minute poem. Approximately. <laughs> a pro well, okay, it's even less than two minutes. No, no of course not. I, it's, no, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. It's what I've ended the book with anyway. Okay. It's called Not Yet. Still too many chocolate-covered raisins, hot showers, 
scent of blackberries in summer, Daphne in winter, mango slurped over a kitchen sink, the beat of Ella and Louie, a bellbird's call, shaped colors of Cezanne, a friend's laughter, and you beside me. Not oh. yet. Oh, that is so, that's the, your basket of treasures. So beautiful. Um, so we have just a minute. What can we do in a minute? What can we do in a minute? Let's see what we can do in a minute. All right. All right. Maybe we'll do um, the farmer's market. Good. Okay. That's bringing us all the way full circle back. Exactly. Okay. Assuming I can find it quickly for yes. you. We're, we're still fine. We are. Okay. Okay. Here's the okay. farmer's market. Uh, with a subtitle called Let Us Pray as in lettuce that we yeah. eat. This morning I found the lettuce pray table of the Interfaith Healing Ministry flanked by Ask the Rabbi at another table. The former in baseball cap and suspenders seated head down reading. The latter salt and pepper beard, black cap, rolled jacket sleeve, standing, smiling. What kinds of questions are asked? His quick reply, well there's a question. I'm asked all kinds. Do Jews believe in an afterlife? How to find more compassion? Bible stories. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> when I looked back, he was seated, scrolling a smartphone, perhaps seeking answers on g.cast.com <laughs> or atonement on eScapegoat. It's that time of year. The goat roaming the internet, symbolically burdened with sins of the Israelites before being cast into the wilderness. That's a great way to end <laughs> Laurel Feigenbaum. Thank you so much. You're most welcome.